The Investec US Dollar S&P 500 auto call is a structured product issued by Investec Bank Limited and listed on the JSE. It is designed to provide investors with an attractive return, a high degree of capital protection. Today, I'm speaking to Brian McMillan, Head of Retail Structured Products at Investec, about the product. Hi, Brian. Thank you for Hi. joining me. Thank you very much. Can you maybe start off by providing us with an overview on this product? Sure. Um, so we at Investec put together a number of these structured products uh, every year. We come out um, uh, every sort of three months with a different tranche product. So that means that you know we collect the money, we do the trade, and then we move on and, and do another one. This specific product is is one of our most popular products, it being the auto call. Now, the auto call um, is a structured product that can last for as long as five years, uh, but it also has the ability to end early after three years. Um, and uh, how it works really is uh, what we do is on day one, we measure what the S&P 500 index is, and we look at that index again three years later. If that index is flat or positive, in other words, if even if it hasn't moved up or even if it's up 5%, 10%, 20%, uh, the product automatically stops at that point after three years. And at that point, the investor will uh, receive a fixed return. That fixed return is uh, fixed up front. Um, currently, we are marketing a level of 8.4% per annum. So after three years, that will be three times 8.4%, simple uh, addition, uh, which would be a 25.2% return that the investor would receive. Now, remember, that is in US dollars. So in terms of US dollar return, that's significantly higher than what you'd be able to get having a US dollar deposit. Um, and... Um, the nice thing about the auto calls and what, what a lot of people like about them is, unlike some of the other structured products which have a start date and an end date, this one actually allows you, if the index is not up after three years, it continues for another year. And uh, at the end of year four, we then look at it and say, is the index up now? Um, and if it's flat or positive at that point, you will get 8.4% uh, or 33.6% return at that point. So um, it's very nice from that point of view in that it gives you this predefined return. You know, you know up front what, what you're going to get if the index is flat or positive, but you also get a chance after three years for it to go into four years or even into year five. And uh, at that point, again, if the index is only up in year five, you will get five times 8.4%, which is a 42% return uh, in US dollars. Um, so from that point of view, that's why a lot of people like these. Um, the other part of this product is that uh, we, we're actually offering two uh, products which are exactly the same. Only the listing difference uh, is different. So, for example, uh, we have one which we list on the JSE, uh, and we have one that we list on the Dublin Exchange. Now, the returns are exactly the same. The difference is that the one that we list, list on the JSE, investors will give us RANDs up front. We will then convert it into US dollars for the term of the offering. And then at the end of the term, we convert it back into RANDs so that the investor gets a RAND settled amount. Um, and that's very similar to people know these from using things like the Signia trackers um, over the S&P 500, the core share trackers and so on. Um, but what it allows people to do is actually make use of their RANDs to invest offshore. Um, for those investors who have money offshore or, or who would like to take money offshore, uh, we do list this ex exact same product in Dublin. Investors would then buy it in dollars. They would get the 8.4% the per, per annum return as well. But obviously, at the end of the term, it doesn't have to get uh, 
you know, turned back into rands because they they will remain in dollars. So that's the the two differences there between the two different listings, but exactly the same product from that point of view. That's great, the diversity that you can offer that, that option. Um, so can you offer further comment on the capital protection aspect of this product? Yes, so um, I think this is what, one of the most important things and one of the reasons why structured products have grown so significantly over the last few years. Uh, we've seen um, you know, growth in structured products on, on our side by more than 30% over the last uh, six or seven years. Um, and one of the reasons we, we believe is that is specifically when clients are dealing with dollars or dealing with their offshore holdings, um, they really want this, they see it as a, a nest egg um, and they want some sort of capital protection on that. Now, this particular product, um, as I mentioned, it can be three years, four years or five years, depending on when the index is positive. But um, at the same time, if that index is down um, in year three, year four and in year five, the investor will have capital protection provided the index hasn't fallen by more than 30%. So let's say okay. in, in uh, year three, the index is down 5%. In year four, um, it's down 7%. And then in year five, it's down uh, 20%. Uh, the investor at that point will get back their full funds, their full US dollars converted back into rands. Or if they take the Dublin one, they'll get their full dollar amount back. And that is because... They, the index hasn't fallen by more than 30%. Now, we've looked at this over uh, the last 20, 30 years. And in fact, on the S&P 500, we found that when you run an order call uh, and back test it um, over the last 20 odd years, there's never been a case, not even the, in the, uh, the GFC of 2008, where um, one of these products you know, didn't call in year three or four or five, and then and ended down more than 30%. Um, so, so it's a high degree of capital protection. Obviously, yeah. there, there can still be a risk. You know, um, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We've had coronaviruses and we've had yeah. global financial crisis. Um, but in all those cases, that, that didn't trigger that event. Um, but if it did, let's say the index does end down, we only measure it at the end of year five. So if it calls in year three, obviously, you know, that um, you wouldn't need the capital protection. But in year five, if that index da ends down, let's say 32 percent, um, the investor at that point will get back 68 uh, percent of their funds. So they would have lost 32 percent. Now, that's very similar to if they were actually holding the um, you know, the ETF over the S&P 500. At that point, those investors would have been down 32% um, at the same time. So what we do is we have this, this buffer of the first 30%, you always get your money back. And then if it falls more than that, um, you would actually have a loss. And again, we, we've put that level in there, um, having back tested and seen that there hasn't been a case in the last 20 years when somebody would have lost money in this product. Fees and costs, always a talking point. Talk to me about that. Yes, so, um, you know, again, uh, one, of, one of the reasons for our products being so successful, I, I believe, is that we're very upfront with the free uh, the fees and the costs that are worked into the product. And that 8.4% per annum that uh, I'm speaking about, that is the full amount that the investor will receive. That's after all fees and costs. Um, we sure. we will pay the uh, advisor. The advisor will receive a fee outside of the product. So if an investor puts um, you know, 100,000 Rand into this, they will get back after three years, 125,200 um, Rand being 25.2% um, in in dollar terms, obviously moved into yeah. dollars, but there's no fees that come off of that amount. Um, the, the advisors will receive a fee outside of the product and they actually receive a fee of 1.25% in year one, 
0.75% uh, in year two and then 0.75% in year three, nothing in year four or five. So all of those fees um, are clearly stated in, in all the uh, documentation um, and are excluded from, from what the client actually receives. So they're outside of that. OK. Uh, while we touch on the subject of fees, maybe we can just talk about the specific licensing requirements because that is quite important. Yes, I, I think, um, you know, these are um, these types of products. Um, uh, you do need a license from, from a financial advisor's point of view. Um, now, we have three different uh, levels of, of um, licensing that the, the advisor can have. So uh, 1.24 is a structured deposit uh, license. Um, so advisors who have that license uh, can sell this particular product. The other one is because it's listed on the JSE um, under the Warren and Note program, 1.11, which is warrants and notes uh, on the JSE. And then because there is a derivative element uh, within these products, 1.13. So the advisor can have any one of those particular product, uh, one of those licenses. If they don't have that license, obviously there might be somebody um, within the firm or uh, one of their friends that um, or other advisors that they could actually go under supervision for for this particular product. Um, but it's important to note that um, the these are actually listed on on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange or on the Dublin Exchange, and so the advisors clients will need to have a stockbroking account with one of the major stockbrokers. And we find that, um, you know, if people don't have that, uh, all the major banks have uh, stockbroking accounts that they're able to open for their for their clients. So uh, a lot of the, um, you know, new investors, they would just open a, a stockbroking account at whichever branch they're actually at. OK. One step back, who's the ideal investor for the article product? Yeah, so, you know, th this particular um, index that we've chosen, the S&P 500, um, has done particularly well over the last uh, 20 odd years. You know, um, since the um, since the tech crash in 2000, um, even though we've had some bumps along the way, like the global financial crisis, like COVID, um, this is a very resilient index. Um, and so it's one of the more conservative indexes from, from the point of view of uh, the growth. You know, America um, has that special ability to, to change their economy much quicker than some of the other countries around the world. You know, they're able to pivot um, much quicker. And we're seeing that at the moment in, um, you know, where we're seeing more and more confidence coming through from economists in the U.S., that the US is going to have a soft landing. In fact, that, uh, I, I saw something this morning, up to 70% of economists are now saying the US is likely to have a soft landing. Um, but, you know, we do recognize that the, in, uh, the index itself um, is quite high. And that's mm. why when we, we looked at this particular product, we said the autocall product makes a lot of sense because the index doesn't have to be up 20 or 30 percent in order to make that return. All it has to be is flat or positive um, in, in year three, four or five. So, you know, we're looking beyond um, certainly this inflationary period, this, uh, you know, um, slowing growth. Um, and looking out three, four and five years, we think that this particular index has the, the ability to be positive. Now, of course, what that allows it to do is um, investors who have, and, and once again, one of the, the big uh, buyers of these structured products over the last few years have been people who are perhaps, um, you know, not typically equity type investors, or they're investors who are approaching retirement. And while they'd like to be invested in, in equities for longer, um, you know, their, their risk reward sort of thing says that they should be taking a little bit more bonds. Yeah. Now, what these types of products, because they offer this high level of capital protection, 
it actually allows these um, these investors to remain invested in equities longer because it has, you know, uh, some of the features of bonds in, in that it has capital protection and then it has some of the features of equity in that it can give you an outsized return above current interest rates. So we're really seeing investors uh, across the board, but certainly those approaching retirement, those with offshore funds that are um, a little bit risk averse because it's mm. their offshore nest egg. Uh, those have been really the buyers that have, have bought a lot of our structured products. Your message to our audience, the advisors selling that product. So I, I think, um, you know, there's always a reason why people, um, you know, go, you know, we shouldn't invest in equities at the moment. Uh, inflation's high. Um, you know, the S&P 500 index has had a very good run this year after the last year's losses. Um, but what we say to to the advisors is we, we issue a number of these structured products. Uh, over time, if uh, an advisor were to build up a portfolio of some of these structured products, so not just owning one of them where you have the risk that, you know, that particular one doesn't work, but having four or five of these all expiring at different times, um, all offering uh, exposure to different markets. Um, and and we found historically, um, you know, that the, the returns have been very good. And in fact, over the last hundred structured products that we've issued, we've actually, uh, so far touch wood, ne none of those have actually um, produced a loss for the client. And in fact, 96% of them have produced a positive return. So only 4% gave back that uh, that capital protection. Yeah. Um, so so that's what I would say to the advisor. You know, there's a there's a place for them. There's particularly good for uh, people moving towards retirement or, um, you know, where they would traditionally switch into a more balanced type of portfolios. These can really come uh, be used in that particular space, and then to to own more than one of them, you know, so that you don't have this risk of the the structured product expiring on one date when you know the world happens to have a a pandemic or a global financial crisis. That was really insightful, and um, I'm, I'm most certainly a potential investor here. Thank you for your time, Brian. Yeah. Um, enjoyed the conversation and um, appreciate your time. Um, yes, thank you. Thanks.